Hi Leo, welcome to your August reading. Happy birthday. What a season. I am sitting outside as the sun is setting. Apologies if you can hear people in the background. It's very common in Denmark for people to eat outside during this time of year because it's just so beautiful and I think people really do wait to have the opportunity to enjoy the sun for, you know, 20 hours at a time. If you would like to take a look at your astrology, I would suggest you check out the All Signs video. We're going intuitive with the tarot and we'll sprinkle in the astrology as it becomes pertinent. So here we go. Queen of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, Eight of Wands, Page of Swords. We're still talking about value. We're still talking about these long-term commitments and how nothing less than that is really interesting to you. And that's really okay because you're coming into your season feeling perhaps not the most social, but you've taken the time to really build yourself up and make yourself into pretty much the best version you could with what you have at the moment. And you know that that deserves a certain amount of reciprocity. And less than that, it's just, it's not for you. If you have an earth sign partner, you really are wanting to communicate to them that, you know, this has to be a deeper thing. This has to be a longer commitment. Do you want to do that? And you may actually end up moving too fast, not for them, but for you. So on one hand, you have all this passion, but on the other hand, you have astrological placements that are going to work against this passion. Jupiter and Saturn are retrograde in Aquarius across from you, which means that until about October, any major decision should be held off on. But you have this urge to rush, even though it's the worst thing that you could do. So... We want to take a step back from ourselves. Yes, it's all about you, but it's also about listening. It's also about giving other people the space to have their feelings. It's about handling your own things without needing them to in any way add to what you're doing or you know, you're just not looking for contributions. You want things to be as they are. So then it's better if you don't ask for help and do it as you want to do it. You may also want to, just as a general rule, give people a little bit of space because you're like firelight right now. You know, everything is drawn to you. You are a raging bonfire in the dark. You are the sun on a beautiful day. Everyone wants to come out of their caves and homes and, and, and you know, be around you and bask in your light. So they're not giving you any space. So the only way for you to get any space is to give them space. And they may not like it, but they need it. One second. Ace of Cups. So, again, is it worth it? Whatever momentary flirtation they may there may be, whatever momentary attraction or you know someone might come along who triggers that need for you to prove yourself it's not enough you want you want it all and less than that i don't know it's just not very interesting saturn and jupiter retrograde in aquarius definitely gives you the guts to not be a people pleaser especially when it comes to people who say they like you then you feel kind of obligated and you actually kind of feel sorry for them like oh wow you really like me so i guess i should do something about this no you are allowed to tell them straight up that it's not enough and some of you have so much pride that you may not even want to do that it may just be enough to not say anything and just back off because 
anyone you choose to pay attention to, any relationship you choose to shine your light on, it will grow. So if something isn't to your liking, you can just turn around and, you know, water the next plant. So you don't need this. You can easily just move on. Now, people who may have deceived you, moved on from you, taken you for granted, it's been months, but they're really feeling it. And no, that's not supposed to make us happy, but there is some sense of vindication there. They deserved it. Now, there is also an element here with the Ten of Swords of healing. You have a lot of time during these retrogrades to heal. So if there are things you're still hanging on to, wounds that you still need to care for, you have until the middle of October to do so. And the healing is slow. So again, you feel this need, Eight of Wands, to go really fast and make your point and, you know, get what you want or make it clear what you don't want. But Uranus is retrograde too, which means that you're not the clearest in your head. So instead of trying to rehabilitate some connection or explain yourself away to someone, maybe it's just better to start over. Maybe it's better to meet new people. Maybe it's better to start a new project or look for a new job instead of trying to fix something that somebody else broke and now you're supposed to be responsible for. It just doesn't seem very fair. But the Eight of Wands is also that need to rush because when Leo knows their value, they rush to see it reflected in other people's eyes. Like, I've figured out that I'm great. Now I want to see in your eyes that this is true. That can make you jump the gun. It can make you put so much pressure on a situation that's working that it begins to fall apart. So it's almost better if you're not as interested because it's so much easier for you to then give space. I mean, nobody gives someone space like a Leo when they're not interested anymore. And what I'm asking you is with all this healing you have to do, with all the people that you're attracting, with all the goodness associated with that healing that's coming to you with all these planets in retrograde. Is this the time to focus on anything but yourself? Not really. I feel like every Leo season I tell you guys that it's okay for you to be selfish. It's okay for you to be who you are and really not have to care as much about other people. I mean, yes, hold space for them, give them space, let them talk, but as soon as it starts to turn toxic. And what is that? When do those relationships turn toxic for a Leo? It's when people start making plans for you. It's when they get so enamored with you that they begin to think that they're the center of your life instead of you being the center of their life. People have a tendency to very quickly get it twisted with you guys. They spend most of their time hoping that you'll pay attention, hoping that they can talk to you or be around you. And then it's so addictive, your energy, and it's so expansive and generous that very quickly they move from being grateful to be in your presence to thinking that they're the gift that they are giving your presence. You can call it a symptom of being too nice or to giving, but I don't think you know what that means and that's a really good thing and you should never change that. But it does mean that you need to start being able to see that in other people. It happens so often that you may be wondering like, yeah, but there's no recourse for this. It's, it happens every time. I don't think that that's the case this time. I think that by October, November, if you take the good advice of your friends, if you keep yourself limited in how much you give to those that you're not serious about if you give yourself this kind of extended period of healing the healing is happening very fast it's just going to take a while because there's a lot to heal from 
that's great. But as soon as you add another person into this whose feelings are tantamount to yours or some, in some cases more important than yours, everything starts to go left. Not because it's your season, but because of the time you're in, in your growth, in your development. When Uranus goes retrograde, you have these moments of being unsure where you want to sink back into bad habits. And that's around August 20th. Bad habits and things that you know diminish you. And there, the cue is just to not let that happen. You have to be your best friend. You have to be that best friend that you are to everybody else that says, hey, are you okay right now? Or isn't this too much? Or aren't we doing a little too much? Or aren't we giving a little too much? And where is the room that then is left for us? It sounds a bit precious, right? To be burdened by being the light that everyone is attracted to, but it is quite a pressure. It, it, it is an enormous burden. And the way to turn it from a burden into a boon is to use the space and use the energy, as I advise every year, on yourself. Anyone who is worth your energy or your firelight will be there without you having to excessively feed them. This is a perfect moment to figure out how many of the people or situations or job, you know, setups you have around you that are just leeching. They're not giving anything back, but more importantly, they don't care what they're feeding from. It's like being a dumb parasite. You know, those parasites that will consume the host until it dies because they don't really care if the parasite stays alive the, uh, if the host stays alive they're not long term that way they just want that short term win there's a lot of people in your life right now that you may realize shockingly actually that they're in it for the short term win <clears throat> I don't know why my voice also gets raspy in Leo season but we're gonna go with it um Getting those particular people out of your life will be easier if you get used to giving people space, if you allow yourself a little bit of room. So even though there's all these people flocking to you who want your light, they can still have it, but you just push it back. You push them back a little bit so you can have a little space and perhaps even grow that fire. Oftentimes when people are attracted to your light or need your heat, they can make it seem like a moral obligation on your part. You have to give me this because I need it. Or you have to pay attention to me or include me because I am attracted to you. So that makes you obligated to me. And these are the things that I would like for you to save yourself from. And the, the way that you can do that is by doing things yourself fending for yourself, not needing other people romantically or otherwise to help you out because every one of those people, whether they have good intentions or not, is going to trigger that in you. And a lot of the people that you would be casually asking for help or casually asking for an admission of feelings or whatever it is that you want, they will absolutely use that opportunity to then come back and feed off of you. It begins to sound a little negative, like, oh, why is everyone out to use me? No, they can't help the way they're attracted to you. And they can't help that they want some of what you have. What you have is pure life energy. You can't fault anybody for wanting that, especially when they can't produce it on their own. But again, that does not obligate you to give it to them. And it should not affect your feelings about yourself because you don't want to give it to them not that you couldn't a lot of times people rope you into this argument of well you could if you wanted to sure you could if you wanted to but the ability to do so also doesn't obligate you you could if you wanted to and you don't want to you don't feel like it that has to be enough 
that has to be what your decision is based on is what your feelings and what you're motivated by and other than that nothing is really that important there's a bunch of people walking by i'm trying to ignore it but they're doing the whole firelight thing really even when i look you in the eye just walk bro so new people come in old people that you spent too much on go out and you are not obligated to either you have no obligations to anyone except to yourself so don't put yourself in positions where you are pursuing anything chasing anything that then makes those people feel like they have some right to you they don't they never did in fact even if they do things for you they still have no right to that energy they have a right to expect reciprocity from you but when have they ever given you anything that is equal to the sun buy him a card or something People always say that there's no holidays in Leo season because you don't need it because it's just so beautiful. And I think the holiday is Leo season. The holiday being it's not cancer season anymore. Love you. Hi Leo, welcome to the second part of your reading. All right, so that first card, Queen of Pentacles, you know, there is something very alluring about the light coming off of you right now, and it has to do with more than just it being your season. I feel like you've been consolidating quite a few different options, whether it be negotiating pay raises or trying contemplating between different job offers, perhaps a change in career. The past six months or so, there has been a focus on leveling up and going where you are appreciated the most and where your pay reflects that. So if some of you are still waiting for that acknowledgement and for that acknowledgement to be backed up with money, that Queen of Pentacles is a great first card. Now, another thing about the Queen of Pentacles is that this is something you can facilitate. This energy can be pulled into your life right now if you don't already feel it, because until at least the 11th, from now until the 11th, you have Mercury. So that means that you're able to say things in the right way to get what you want. Now, for some of you, finances have already been taken care of, and now we're moving to the 10 of cups. Now you're really focusing on your family life, on wholeness, on being together, on reconnecting with friends. This doesn't necessarily have to be about romance. Ten of Cups is about emotional fulfillment. And as we know, especially you being such an independent sign, it doesn't have to be about romance. Now, can it be about romance? Yes, for some of you, that romantic connection, Eight of Wands, is moving super fast. But for those of you who are single or not so, let's say, established of a relationship, perhaps this is the time to keep your options open because, like I said in the first part, you are a fire in the dark. Everyone wants to warm themselves by your fire. And what you don't want to do is get so lost in the attention that you forget to give that attention back to at least the person you like the most. So do a little sorting out, do a little filtering. Yes, there's a lot coming your way, but somewhere in there is a gem. Somewhere in there is someone that you really would like to connect with, do business with, date, whatever it is. And it would behoove you to then pay attention back to that person. Don't leave that person with the rest of the adoring masses. That page of swords comes next, referring again to that mercurial energy, which can really help you in love as well. Ace of Cups, how? Well, oftentimes you do have 
these feelings that run so incredibly deep as all fixed signs do, but it's just too mm, embarrassing, cringy, right? To put into words. But from now until the 11th, you have such a way of saying what you feel that even the cheesiest thing comes across as just romantic and sweet and it opens more doors and it opens more hearts and it presents more opportunities and, now this being just about you, and a change of mind. Now that change of mind is so important because it gives you this independence, this Aquarian independence, right? The star there. Now remember, Jupiter has just re-entered Aquarius today and we have Saturn there, both retrograde. So this is a time for you to learn how to do all things by yourself. This is a time to cultivate that self-reliance, which leads inevitably to the nine of pentacles. Someone who is completely fine in every way, chilling, flexing, like, and remember, she's holding this falcon, this hooded falcon in on her hand. That falcon representing being able to, when it is your choice, when you choose to remove the hood, being able to see far and wide much, much further, because we are talking in terms of metaphors here, much further than you would be able to see on your own. So this self-reliance opens doors for you in terms of observation. You can see things much more clearly when you don't have any crutches, when you don't need to rely on anyone else. Now, the idea of self-reliance is almost a little bit depressing to Leos, not because you're not already and not because you're not capable, but because there seems like a lack of community there, right? Leos like the idea of people needing each other and, 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 and leaning on each other and exchanging energy and exchanging emotion. But I think that the reason you tend to think that way is because perhaps you haven't really enjoyed true self-reliance before. In fact, self-reliance can make you much more social. It can make you, it can deepen your connections to your community, to your network. Why? Well, you will notice that you still need people in terms of, you know, just communicating your social life, your discussing problems, you still, you still want them, let's say. You still want them, but you don't need them in the same way. So there's no urgency, right? This urgency that can develop within Leos, especially Leo Risings, because they want what they want, when they want it, and that's the only thing that's going to make them happy. This takes so much power away from you. Okay, this Aquarian energy is going to teach you a new mind where even the things that you want very much so, you know, this kind of vehement want, you're still able to in some way manage it. It doesn't become so big that the want begins to own you. You're still in control. This is a really big distinction and it's important evolutionary step for you. It's a big one that you take in August and you won't be the same after it. Now look at what comes after that. Once you master this around, let's say the middle of the month, that being able to look further, being able to go further, being able to earn more, all starts to roll in naturally. So then we go from nine of pentacles, three of wands, 10 of pentacles. Okay. So there is that completion. There is that confirmation that you standing on your own doing for yourself brings you all the benefits. It's also very good that the 10 of pentacles and the wheel of fortune are there because you are very, very keenly focused on the future. Yes, you're having fun in the moment. Yes, you're happy. Yes, things are good. But it's like something has changed in you. You're still very much in the now, but you want this feeling to continue steady as it is now long term. So any of you who are having a great time, but you feel the temporary nature of it, right? It's too temporal for you. It's, 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 you, you're just sure it's not going to stick around. You begin to be turned off by it. 
even if it's fun in the moment, you're just like, ah, this is transitory. I don't, I don't really like this, even though yes, in the moment, this is great, but I'm looking, you know, five years down the road and I don't see you here. I don't see this project or I don't see myself being at this job. So it's losing its appeal because all I want is for the good feeling I have, the, the high self-esteem that I have, the worth that I feel, I want it to be consistent and continue. So those are the projects, people that stick out to you now. Everything else you're like, nah, great, but I'm not interested. Why? Three of cups, 10 of swords. Well, because you've been down that road. You've had the transitory fun for right now, here for a good time, not a long time. You, you've lived it, okay? You've done all the self-medicating, the indulging, the addictions, the, the aftermath, the consequences, you've been there, you've done all that. And it didn't really leave you with much. In fact, most of you, by the time we get to say October of this year, are going to be like, I never want to do those things again. So you're maturing in many ways. And this is one of them where you see your lifestyle becoming so much cleaner because your mistakes are so obvious to you now from the past. And to the point where, again, it's kind of cringy. Where you're like, why did I do that? Or why did I used to indulge in this habit or that habit or dress like this or say these things or date these kind of people or you know, take on jobs that were not worthy of me or didn't appreciate me enough and didn't compensate me enough? you are seeing from a place of great abundance and gratitude and good luck, you are looking back at your past and seeing exactly where the pitfalls were and exactly the consequences that you paid for those mistakes, for those weaknesses, whatever you want to call them. Let's call them teachable moments, okay? This begin, then culminates into one big teachable moment where you're like, aha, I don't want to do this anymore. Cool. Knight of Cups. Well, as soon as you're settled on committing to being healthy, committing to making the right choices for you and for the sanctity of your soul, you move from there to really taking a critical, let's say objective look at your love life. If it is not working, if you are not getting what you need, if you are not being treated the way you should be treated, the way you are absolutely sure and certain you must be treated, then you gotta walk. Yeah, you've given a lot of time. Yes, you've you know put the work in. Yes, you've been patient. But there is something to be said for any connection that constantly makes you feel unsure of what's happening, of your role, and your worth. Because remember, this is something that she has done to herself. Her hands are not tied. Nobody is forcing her to hold these swords. She has decided that this is how she's going to spend her time by blindfolding herself and becoming incapacitated because the mind is so split that nothing can be done. The person becomes immobile and split between what? Is this worth it? Do I stay? Is this not worth it? Do I go? Do I move forward in my love life? Do, do, I, do I reintroduce this person into my life? Do I pursue this again or do I move forward in my love life? Do I leave behind what was essentially almost all the cups can I do it? Because some of these cups are things that are very important to you. Could be your job, your reputation, a child. There are extenuating circumstances and those will be affected by the choice you make, which is why it makes sense that you have hesitated. But this two of swords energy does not help anyone, especially not those people. Because you're not leaving those people behind. Sure, they may be affected by it, but the only thing you're really leaving behind is how much you had put in. You're just taking back what you put in and leaving and those cups can stay where they are. You pull your energy back so you can be who you are and who you've always meant to, been meant to be. Doesn't sound right. Who you were always meant to be. Mm-hmm. 
you, you were meant to be this. And you know this better than anyone. When you embody this Empress energy, nobody can touch you. Nobody can catch you. Your ideas are better than other people's ideas. Your energy is more addictive, more alluring, more magnetic. Your beauty is much more sublime. When you feel like this, like this, when you feel this Empress energy, when you really, truly embody it, you're unstoppable. The opportunities just roll in. So all the rest of this that we've just talked about is to get you here. And if you go back and rewind and listen to the second part starting here, you will see that it is a play-by-play. -play. It is a blueprint of how to get you here. And of course, I mean, it is your season after all. <laughs> Happy August. I love you. If you are interested in a personal reading, check out the cameo link below the extended version of this reading where we go through all the cards and clarify and we talk about each sign and how they relate to Leo's this month. That will be on Vimeo. It will be on Patreon. The first part of this video was available on Patreon about a week ago. All the videos are still being posted to YouTube starting on the first of the month. Actually, this one I'm posting early because Leos love that. But everything else you can find on Patreon early in the month, starting at the beginning of each season, each zodiacal season, excuse me. But as of the first of the month, they do all go on YouTube as well. So don't worry about that. If you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading over something like FaceTime, there is a company called Chattelize that I work with, which is wonderful for this. And after a long time, I'm bringing the Chattelize readings back because there has been quite a lot of interest. So there will be a link for Chattelize below as well. Now, if you are interested in a daily horoscope where we take a look at the major transit of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, and how it affects your sign, your sun, moon, and rising, check out at The Quietest Revolution on Insta. And last but not least, here are our gorgeous offerings, The Empress and The World. Both of these rings are available at ambercon.com. And that link is below as well. On ambercon.com, you will also find links for merch and events. So head on over there and check it out. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Happy birthday. Oh, and thank you for just being the light that you are. I can say from personal experience that having Leo friends and family is really one of the luckiest things that can happen to you because the love that you radiate, it is so protective. And that protective love vibe is just exactly what I need and what I love. And it makes me feel so safe in my own life. And there isn't much that can compete with that feeling of safety. You know, when you really know that you're loved, when you can feel it like in your bones, when you know that the people you love love you fiercely and pray for you and hold you in their heart. It's very rare to find love like that. And yet I find it in so many Leos. You are always so generous with your heart. And that just has to be said. And also happy birthday, Dora. I love you. <laughs> All the Leos, I love you. Happy birthday. I'll see you in the extended right now.